Hello everyone, welcome back to OC Recovery's YouTube channel. Today I have a specific ask that Moen wanted me to do. Uh, there are definitely a lot of people that suffer with this fear, whether you actually have the fear of having it or actually having it, it doesn't really matter because it's still handled the same exact way. And that's gonna be talking about tinnitus or tinnitus, AKA ringing in the ears. So before I go any further, if you could please subscribe down below, great videos going up all the time on the channel. There's definitely been a lot of videos by me. I've been making a lot more content for Rob. Um, it's something I really enjoy. So you'll probably be seeing a lot of me. So I always tell people, you know, if you wanna, if you have any questions on stuff you're a little concerned about, you know, how acceptance works, how to move with uncertainty, how to go about just basically getting over your particular fears. Uh, the moderators can talk together and see which ones, you know, are the best about going over those uh, specific fears and go from there. So I got my coffee. This is my only my second one of the day, but I usually stop at second, but this cup is really cool. So after my dad passed away, he had a beach house in the Jersey Shore. I just like took all the shore stuff because I live so far inland now, but I do have mountains and I'm a big hiker. Number one, as we know with OCD, it's important to a degree to understand how OCD works. Now, there are people out there that will make you believe that you need to understand every single working detail about how OCD works, where it comes from, from the thalamus in the brain, where the, the synapses are going wrong, the connection between the prefrontal cortex and the limbic system. None of that actually matters. You don't need to understand all that. You just have to understand basically like, you know, the, the the structure of relapses and back and backdoor spikes. So you understand as you go along, you don't have to engage with those backdoor spikes because if you don't understand that, when you have a backdoor spike, it's very easy to just say, holy crap, what's going on and start engaging. So what is tinnitus? So tinnitus or tinnitus is what they believe is what's called a central problem. It's not a peripheral problem. So your brain likes 100% sound, okay? So Sound goes in, I believe it goes from mechanical to transduction. It doesn't really matter, but the sound goes in and when you get hearing loss, the ear cells in your ears, they like 100% sound and you can't rejuvenate those ear cells. And then people start going down that route. They start Googling that and they say, you can't rejuvenate ear cells and none of that matters. And what happens is your brain makes a phantom sound. So if you lose 20% sound in your ear, your brain makes up a, fa a phantom sound, not in every single person with hearing loss. And then it basically creates this sound where people will say like, I don't hear it on the outside. It sounds like it's coming from my brain. So that's the, all you need to know about tinnitus. It's usually instructed by hearing loss. Now there are people that are gonna be fearful of having tinnitus and that it's gonna ruin their lives. So good exposures for that can be watching documentaries of people with tinnitus or listening to me where it completely debilitated my life for four months. I slept like two hours a day. That was actually really tough. That was before I got somatic OCD. But the reality is it doesn't actually matter what the cause of tinnitus is. Uh, it's cool to learn that stuff, but you don't need to learn that stuff per se. So what happened with me? Uh, I woke up one morning, to, well, it was in the middle of the night to take a pee, and uh, my ear was ringing, and I went back to sleep, and I woke up, and my ear was still ringing. So I had a panic attack. I was highly stressed because I was in school. Um, I didn't really take care of my mental health a whole lot. I just bottled a, a lot of things up, and it just spiraled, and I had a panic attack. And that's when it latched. And that was because som somatic OCD and tinnitus styles or fears with OCD are very, very similar and handled, handled in the same exact format. So it went from one ear to two ears. I didn't sleep. I was in full panic almost 24 hours a day. Erica can, you know, account for that. It was really, really bad. Um, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know Rob at the time. And I did everything I could to distract myself from the sound. I wouldn't, you know, use the dishwasher because I didn't like hearing the sounds. Um, I was afraid it was going to ruin my entire life. And then basically it took over my life. Now, the biggest mistake that audiologists will make is the, the hearing devices and the background noises and the blanking it out. Your brain is simple. This is for OCD or not. It's about cognitive behavioral therapy and REBT and realizing the sound, there's nothing to be afraid of, even if it was there for the rest of your life. Even if you still have this, e forever, it would be frustrating, but you could still stand it. But when I watch videos of people with tinnitus, which I've watched plenty, 
of videos, all from the American Tinnitus Association. You know, people are like, my life is ruined, my life is over, I can't do anything. OCD or not, that's not a good belief to have because that perpetuates the sound because you're afraid of it and your brain's dumb. You're afraid of something, the alarm system's going off, and you're telling your brain there's something wrong. So if you wear those ear masking devices, you'll never, you're never going to actually recover from tinnitus, whether you have OCD or not. And there's a lot of blend over with this that people get confused about. Now let's talk about why it sticks and some of the fears. Fear number one, the fear of noticing the sound and it ruining your life for the rest of your life. Sounds very similar to... Physical anxiety symptoms and sensory motor OCD sounds very similar. Fear number two, it ruining your sleep. Humans are so irrational about sleep. You know, we have the, the turn your lights off at a certain time, wear the blue light blocking glasses, bring down stress. We're so hyper-focused on these things like we're going to live forever, but we're not going to. Life is very, very short for a lot of people, and people will just dictate their whole entire life about fear. Do you know how many people are obsessed about sleep and they, they aren't OCD sufferers? And then you combine that with OCD and combine that with tinnitus fears, especially if you have it, it's a done deal for a lot of people because they're so fixated on this perfection sleep cycle. Sleep is important, don't get me wrong, I'm not sitting here saying sleep is not important, but we put way too much emphasis on sleep. If you slept five hours, if you slept four hours a day for the rest of your life, you probably wouldn't function at your optimum, but what's optimal anyway? You might be tired a lot of the day, but you could still stand it. Because there's people in time that were in Auschwitz, like Man's Search for Meaning, that didn't sleep for three years, basically. They were sleeping like 30 minutes at a time because they had forced labor. So these ideas that we have, people will spend the last two to three hours of their day trying to get the lights, the, the correct sleep routine, the right mattress, how important sleep is. Do you, I'm going to give you a key. Do you know who people are with the best sleep? People with no sleep routine at all. They just, they either get sleep or they don't get sleep. That's it. Like last night, I slept like four hours. I was having some weird pain, that, that, that like chronic pain that I have here and there from a training thing. And it didn't bother me one bit. I probably slept like three hours last night, to be honest, because I was up at like two in the morning, like, oh, hey, whatever it is. And I went to bed at like 1030. So it's that fear that you have. It's the fear. The fear of going crazy and ending up in a mental hospital. This was big for me. After my tinnitus journey, and I recovered, and we're going to talk about how to recover from tinnitus, whether you have it, the true tinnitus or the fear. Again, similar, it's the same exact thing. I was in a mental hospital, okay? So people are very afraid of going to a mental hospital. There's stigmas in a mental hospital. We see these pictures of like people in dungeons, like we do like with video game or hackers. And we have a persona belief, an irrational belief about what these people are supposed to look like. So you know, the fear of going to the mental hospital. So how did Albert Ellis break that down? You could go to the mental hospital and it would definitely be uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable for me. I was there for 96 hours against my own will. Um, and it was a crazy experience. It was probably the best experience I've ever had, to be honest. Mm. I met some really cool people. So it's all fear. When you get over fears, there's nothing in life stopping you from doing anything you want to do. This isn't to say that you're not going to be met with failure. Fear, just because you have no fear, is not a predecessor or precursor to absolute success in all these different areas of life. But you're still going to be uncomfortable more than likely. You'll still have some daily anxiety, especially like me, run a business, do stuff for Rob. I'm all over the place. I'm ADHD. But none of that sticks because I just accept that that's who I am and I might have certain aspects about me. I have an addictive personality, so I have to accept I have to balance things like coffee because I'll drink 15 cups in a day because I'm nuts. So, but this is what acceptance is about, but everything when it comes to tinnitus, it's all about getting it perfect, the perfect sleep. I got to have, you know, uh, I, I can't hear the sound at certain, it's, it has nothing to do with the sound. The sound is a small part. It's not that it has nothing to do with the sound. It's just that the sound is not the driving factor of it. It's the fear of it ruining your life. The fear of going crazy. The fear of going crazy and potentially harming someone. The fear of ending up in a mental hospital. The fear of it being stuck forever. The fear of completely losing your hearing and only being able to hear this internal buzzing for the rest of your life. And here's where people go wrong. And I explain this all the time. 
It has a, it has a place. There's a place for it inside of the recovery journey. What do I mean by that? A place for it. When you tell your stuff self like, well, yeah, one in six people have tinnitus. That's true. But if you have OCD, it will work around that. It's not that that it's not a factual thing because we do like looking at reality, but we also have to go towards unconditional life acceptance. Even if I was stuck forever with ringing in my ears, even if I was stuck for, with ringing forever, it wouldn't be the catastrophe I'm making it out to be. That is absolutely critical for getting over the fear of tinnitus, the fear of it ruining your sleep, going crazy, or if you have it like myself and like Marie had it and a couple other people I talked to, I got buddies that served over in Iraq that have horrendous tinnitus, they tell me. They don't care. They think it's annoying, but they, they went to school with me. They still got a doctorate. I never heard them one time, one time say, oh my gosh, this is terrible. My buddy, oh, what is his name? He was in the class below me. He was like, yeah, dude, like you know how many times I've shot rockets in Iraq and I, he's like, my hearing is dead. He's like, I, it's so bad. I'm like, oh, you have tinnitus. He's like, heck yeah, I got tinnitus. I said, does it bother you? And he's like, no, no, I don't know. It's just part of who I am. That goes to show you it's the belief. It might be a little bit harder for you to get underneath that belief, but you can. So how to recover from tinnitus slash tinnitus. The reason why I say it like that is because I say tinnitus, but some of the British people will say tinnitus. I'm sure Rob says tinnitus. The Brits. I love Rob. So how do you recover from tinnitus slash tinnitus? Not using masking devices not looking at long-term distractions. The first step for me was reading a book called Rewiring Tinnitus by, um, oh, his last name is Schwartz, but he has Meniere's disease, which is a neurologic disorder with bilateral tinnitus and severe vertigo. So that's a really good exposure if you're afraid of that, watching stuff by him. And he realized his life, he was like, my life is over, you know, so bad. Mind you, a chronic, ver uh, chronic vertigo spells, a room spinning, throwing up. He realized one day sitting in his bed, he goes, I'm doing everything I can to get away from it. Why don't I go towards it? That was the key for me. You know, for me personally, there's a lot of people out there that say stuff like, you should never focus on it. It has its place. That is too black and white. Same thing like sensory motor. You, you can use it as an exposure, but it needs to be used sparingly so you're not walking around all day trying to hyper-focus on it yourself actively to bring your, your fear down because that's just trying to rid yourself of it. Um... So no masking devices, more than likely, no long-term distractions and stuff like that. It's going to be the fear. Anything that has to do with really like a sound, sensory motor, hyper-awareness, the exposures are minimal to these things. And it is the fear, the core fear of being stuck forever that will need to be have some disputing. And where do we learn disputing from? From the books on the reading list. How to stubbornly refuse to make yourself miserable about anything, yes, uh, comma, yes, anything, the myth of self-esteem, reading man's search for meaning, realizing that you can withstand the sound in your ear if Viktor Frankl can withstand going through Auschwitz for multiple years and ha being malnourished and, and dehydrated and cold, la hard labor and 30, 40 mile walks. And that's why the book is on the reading list. I have had people say to me, why is this book on the reading list? To help you change your perspective about what you can handle in life. Listen, I could lose my legs right now. Lose my legs right now. Boom, legs are gone. I could still function. I might not like it. I'd still find a way around it. And it's easy for me to say that when I have legs. We all know that. I had a good talk about getting cancer because uh, one of my patients last night, his dad died of bladder cancer and my dad died of pancreatic cancer. So we're like, you know, he's like, how? Because he knows I'm into this stuff. So he's like, how do you go about that? So I talked about the philosophies from Albert Ellis and he really likes the works of Albert Ellis. Um, he had never heard of them, like most people. So, and that's how you really get over this fear. It's that just constant, you know, it's gonna ruin my life. The fear of going crazy, sleep is huge because rightfully so, you have like a, and everyone's tinnitus, tinnitus or tinnitus can be different. Mine was a ee, I've talked to people that's a roaring like Some people are like swishing like it's just different. And none of that even matters. You know, what matters is the fear that you're holding attached to it. And this isn't just OCD sufferers. This is people that have tinnitus. 
and they and they they portray it in especially with the military in America. Oh, your life is ruined if your ears are ringing. And then they're like, oh, my life is ruined. Your life is not ruined if you got some ring in your ears. I could still hike, run a business, hang out with my wife, annoy Rob. I could I could I could do plenty of stuff, you know. And that's what makes life really fun because it goes to show you what you can handle, and that's a vital part. If you can go about not engaging with the sound tinnitus is when it comes and start disputing the beliefs from the reading list, you can start getting over these fears. Uh, I know Marie did a really good video, I think it was like a year ago, on the fear of just, you know, going crazy and the fear of being stuck with the sound. So yeah, thank you so much for listening. Let's go see what the dogs are doing. So my landlord was at the house yesterday and she's in my backyard and I was like, the hole's there. I'm like, oh yeah. I tried to cover it with um with a rug. Yeah, random rug at my backyard. That worked. There's the bud. There's the there's the menace to society. And look who it is. Out next to the hole. <laughs> smiling away. Let's get real close to her before I end the video. It's beautiful outside today. One thing I love about Colorado is there's no humidity. It's like 7% humidity. Look at this. Look at this cutie right there. Yeah. Then I give her a bath and she comes in and she makes the house and completely dirty again. So that's great. But uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, like I said, the, the, the real thing is going to come down to the fears. Getting over those fears of being stuck. It's going to take you a little bit longer. I always tell people it's going to take you usually a little bit longer than you want. But the results can be very beneficial to your life. And thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and have a great day.